This week on Granite State Challenge, the team from Oyster River High School takes on the team from Winnicunit High School. Only one team will advance. Granite State Challenge starts now. Major funding for the production of Granite State Challenge is provided by Unitil. Additional funding provided by NEA New Hampshire, Safety Insurance, the New Hampshire Lottery, D.F. Richard Energy, Cognia, HRCU, and viewers like you. Thank you. Get ready. It's time for New Hampshire high schools to match wits in a high-stakes scholastic showdown. It's time for Granite State Challenge. Here's your host, John Cannon. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this, our 41st season of Granite State Challenge. We're getting towards the end of our first round. Six teams have already punched their ticket to round two. We've got two teams here this week hoping to do the same thing. Let's introduce them to you. First up, we have the team from Oyster River High School. They are led by senior Captain Lincoln, who has lived on how many continents? Three. Three continents. Okay, which continents? Uh, Asia, Europe, and North America. Okay, do you have a specific place that you lived that you loved the most? I love that here the most, honestly. Yeah. Okay, and what is it about here that you love the most? Uh, uh, it's just very pretty. There's a lot to do, I think. Yeah. A little bit of everything, huh? Yeah. All right, Lincoln is joined by Junior Aaron. And Aaron, you share a birthday with which holiday? Yeah, my birthday's on Valentine's Day. Okay, Valentine's Day. So my Aunt Sally's birthday's on Valentine's Day as well. Yeah, I get a lot of comments about people with the same birthday. I, I bet you do people. with a birthday like that. Do people always give you Valentine's themed things on your um, birthday? Not really, but I definitely get a lot of comments about it. A lot of comments about love or whatever. Ah, so, yeah. Well, that's all right. You'll have it for the rest of your life. All right, Aaron is joined by sophomore Annika who's a fan of what genre of movies? Um, I like horror movies a lot. Okay, so what is it about horror movies that you like so much? Um, well, I like watching the bad acting. You like it because it's funny? Yeah. Yeah, all right, I guess that's a good reason to watch horror movies. All right, and Annika is joined by James, a junior, uh, whose favorite subject in school is? I uh, like math. You like math, and uh, what is it about math you like? Uh, just like how straightforward it is, it's not like, open-ended answers. Gives you the right answer, right? You planning yeah. on going into a field that uses math? Definitely. Definitely. Awesome. All right. The team alternate is Everett, a freshman, and the team is coached by John Monahan, and they're the team from Oyster River High School. All right. Waiting to take them on is the team from Winnicunit High School. They are led by senior captain Vivienne, who is a fan of birds. Tell us about that. Um, when I was younger, my great aunt visited from Nevada and she took me bird watching and I've always loved birds since. We took a whole drive down to Plum Island to see piping plovers and it was pretty cool. Nice. So you're a bird watcher. You go watch the birds. Sometimes, yeah. It's very uh, nice. Well, that's fantastic. You could do that for the rest of your life. All right. Vivienne is joined by Junior Anthony, who's a three-season athlete. What sports you play and uh, do you have a favorite? Um, I play soccer, swimming, and lacrosse and lacrosse would have to be my favorite. Lacrosse, so the season's about to start. You yes. got big hopes for the season? Um, yes, I do. Um, it's gonna be lots of shoes to fill, so. Okay, a lot of shoes to, to fill, but you know, up and coming, take those shoes over, maybe do, maybe outperform expectations, huh? Yes. One can hope. All right, Anthony is joined by Adam, also a junior, who plays, it says here, a lot of instruments. Which instruments? Well, it's, <laughs> it's a lot. I. Started off with piano, then electric guitar, acoustic guitar, bass guitar, uh, drum kit, matching tenors, matching snare, matching bass drum, marimba, glockenspiel, xylophone, all things like that. Okay. French horn and vocals in the baritone range and tenor range. All right. So I'm hoping that you plan on having some sort of career or future in music. Is that true? Yes, I, I do. I'm trying to see if I can go into college for music composition. Oh, awesome. I love it. Well, good luck with that. Adam is joined by Emma, a sophomore who practiced for Granite State Challenge with who? Uh, my grandmother. With your grandmother. <laughs> and how did that come about? Well, we've always liked doing trivia together. When I go over to her house, we watch Jeopardy. Mm -hmm. So she suggested it. I thought it was a good idea. And how'd it and, go? Uh, pretty well. All right. Yeah. Well, I hope that it goes really well for you guys. We shall see. 
The team alternates are senior Sydney and junior Chloe, and the team is coached by Kevin Fleming, and they're the team from Winnicunit High School. All right, teams, nice to meet you, but we have one more introduction, and that is, of course, our judge back with us again is Ann Belanger. All right, teams, introductions are out of the way. Go ahead and grab those signaling devices because it is time to play Granite State Challenge. As you know, we play in four rounds, and in round one, we do 10-point toss-up questions. So, Oyster River and Winnicunit, good luck. Here we go. In 1944, Iceland declared independence from this country. Emma of Winnicunit. Uh, Denmark? Yes. These two sisters who got their start playing Michelle on the family sitcom Full House launched a luxury fashion label, The Row, in 2006. Aaron of Oyster River. Mary Kay and Ashley Olsen. That is right. The REM stage of sleep usually starts about 90 minutes into a sleep cycle. What does REM, or R-E-M, stand for? Lincoln of Oyster River. Rapid eye movement. Yes. In this 1967 ruling, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that state laws prohibiting interracial marriage are unconstitutional. Lincoln of Oyster River. Loving v. Virginia. Yes. Lyricist Tim Rice, known for his work on Jesus Christ Superstar and Evita, worked with Elton John on the songs for this 1994 Disney movie. Lincoln again. The Lion King. That's right. This basketball player, considered by many to be the greatest of all time, tragically died along with his daughter and seven others in a helicopter crash in 2020. Lincoln of Voice of River. Kobe Bryant. Yes. Teams, where will you find the Pesky Pole, named for Johnny Pesky? Aaron of Voice of River. Fenway Park. That's right. On July 28, 1870, President Ulysses S. Grant signed a bill designating this as a legal unpaid holiday for federal employees in the District of Columbia. Aaron of Oyster River. Labor Day? Sorry, no. Win a cunt it? Vivienne? Memorial Day? Sorry, it's Christmas Day. Christmas Day. In 1876, this Scottish-born inventor submitted a patent for the telephone. Annika of Oyster River. Um, Alexander Graham Bell. That's it. All right, teams, your next question is a picture question, so go ahead and take a look at your monitors. In a speech to Congress in 1918, this president laid out his 14 points for peace, including freedom of the seas and free trade and self-determination following World War I. Aaron of Oyster River. Woodrow Wilson. That's right. You decide to call your grandmother in California at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. What time will she have to answer the phone in her Los Angeles bungalow? Aaron of Oyster River. 7 a.m. That's right. According to Grammarist.com, one of the trickiest words to spell in the English language is nauseous. Spell nauseous. Emma of Winnicunit. Uh, N-A-U-S-E-O-S. -E Sorry, no. Oyster River? Lincoln? N-A-U-T-I-O-U-S. Sorry, nope. It is N-A-U-S-E-O-U-S. -E -O -O is that U at the end? Grammarist.com is right. You might have heard that the three smallest bones in the human body are the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. Where are they found? Annika of Oyster River. Ear. Say it again. In the ear. In the ears, right. This man was the first president of the Palestine National Authority, where he served from 1994 to 2004, and was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize along with Israeli Prime Ministers Yitzhak Rabin and Shimon Peres in 1994. His name was Yasser Arafat. Movie star Marilyn Monroe married this baseball player, known as Jolton Joe and the Yankee Clipper, in 1954 at the San Francisco City Hall. Adam of Winnicunit. Joe DiMaggio? Yes. All right, teams, it's time for our Unitil power question. This question is worth double points, so a 20-point toss-up question coming to you at your monitors. Take a look. Billionaire industrialist Sir Reginald Hargreaves created this institution to raise seven of his 43 children with superpowers. Anthony of Winnicunit. 
The Umbrella Academy? That's right. Once found throughout Southeast Asia, these great apes spend most of their time in trees and are now only found in parts of Borneo and Sumatra. Anthony of Winnicunit. Orangutans? Correct. A 1969 clash. Oop, we will wait until the last round to get back to that question. And we're out to a bit of a start here. Oyster River with a little lead, 100 to 50. All right, teams, nice job in round one. We're going to go right into round two, which is our three strikes and you're out round. Here's how it works. Each team gets 10 questions. We go right down the line, each player getting one question. And we go until you answer all 10 or you get three strikes and your team is out. We'll give you 10 points for each correct response, a bonus of 10 if you get them all right. And just as a reminder, each team has three passes. So if you don't know the answer, you can pass to one of your teammates. Um, and as another reminder, something in the previous question will be the inspiration for the next question. So, Oyster River, Lincoln, this is your question. This mountain pass with a colorful name in northern New Hampshire was caused by erosion by the Laurentide Ice Sheet. I don't know. It is Pinkham Notch. Aaron. The 2002 movie Ice Age tells the story of three friends, Diego, a saber-toothed cat, Sid, a ground sloth, and Manny, who is this large and extinct animal. A mammoth? Yes, correct. Annika, the last one of this large flightless bird once found on the island of Mauritius was killed in 1681. Uh, the dodo? That is right. James, this flightless bird is found in New Zealand and shares its name with a fruit. The Kiwi. Correct. Lincoln, the films in this trilogy, based on the works of J.R.R. Tolkien, were filmed in New Zealand. Uh, the Lord of the Rings. That's right. Aaron, the Hunger Games trilogy were written by this novelist. Pass. Uh, Suzanne Collins. Suzanne Collins is right. James, Budapest, the capital of Hungary, is bisected by this river, made famous in a waltz by Johann Strauss II. The Danube. That is right. Lincoln, the Blue Danube waltz is used in this 1968 film by Stanley Kubrick about an astronaut and a murderous computer named Hal. Uh, in Estella? Sorry, oh, it's 2001 2000. A Space Odyssey. Oh. Aaron, this epic po in, uh, the epic poem The Odyssey was written by this Greek poet. Pass. All right, that is your second pass. Annika, your question? Um, uh, Homer. Homer is right. And James, Homer is one of the lead characters in this animated series. The Simpsons. The Simpsons, that is correct. And that ends your three strikes in your out round. All right, Oyster River, nice work on that. Winnicunit, we come to you. And Vivienne, we're going to start with you. Same drill. Vivienne, Exeter, New Hampshire native Daniel Chester French is perhaps most famous for his large sculpture of this seated president. Abraham Lincoln. Correct. Anthony, Michelangelo's most famous statue is this work depicting a biblical figure who took on a giant. Pass. Pass. Adam? David. David is right. Emma. Leonardo, Michelangelo, Donatello, and Raphael are all artists, but they are, are, they are also members of this crime-fighting group of reptiles. Pass. Okay, it's a pass to Vivienne. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That is right. Anthony, Leonardo DiCaprio was the king of the world in this 1997 film directed by James Cameron. Pass. Pass to Adam, that's your last pass. The Titanic. Titanic is right. Emma, this 2009 movie by James Cameron is set in Pandora in the 22nd century. Avatar. Yes. Vivienne, in Greek mythology, Pandora did this and released all the evils of humanity. Opened the box. She opened the box, yes. Anthony, this is the largest Greek island and is where the Minotaur was slain by Theseus in Greek mythology. Crete. Crete, yes. Adam. This is what you call a dictionary of synonyms. Thesaurus? Yes. Emma, this man whose name is synonymous with dictionaries published his first dictionary, a compendious dictionary of the English language in 1806. Uh, Oxford? Sorry, it is Noah Webster. Uh. Vivienne, 
Merriam-Webster's 2022 word of the year was this word that means manipulating someone until they begin to question their own reality. Gaslight. That is right. And that ends your three strikes and your out rounds. All right, great job on those rounds, teams. At this time, we're going to go into round three, which is our 60-second round. It's a team round, so alternates, why don't you come on up and join your teams at the podiums. And the way this round works is each team is going to get 10 questions in a category, and we will start with the team that is trailing. And you can choose from these categories, all right? Tower time, yo-ho-ho, -ho, and have a ball. Uh, yo ho ho, please. Yo ho ho. Okay. The answers to all of the following will be related to pirates. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> okay. 60 seconds, start the clock. You may see this bird perched on a pirate's shoulder. Parrot? Yes. This might mark the spot on a map where treasure is buried. X. X. Yes. This book by Robert Louis Stevenson is about pirates and buried gold. Treasure Island. Island. Yes. You might find this gruesome symbol on a pirate flag. Stone crossbones. Stone crossbones. Yes. This animal swallowed Captain Hook's hand. Crocodile. Yes. English pirate Edward Teach is more commonly known by this description. Yes. This city's baseball team is named the Pirates. Pittsburgh. Tampa. Pittsburgh. Wait. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Uh, judges, think about that. Johnny Depp played this pirate in the Pirates of the Caribbean. Jack Sparrow. Yes. A pirate might wear this after an ocular injury. Eye patch. Yes. A pirate might bury his gold in one of these wooden containers. Chest. chest. Okay, we'll think about that one too. The answer was chest. We were going for treasure chest, but we'll see what the judges say. How many? 10 out of 10 on your 60 second round. Great job, Winnicunit. So that's 110 points. All right, Oyster River, tough fact to follow, but Lincoln, you and your team will get to choose from our remaining categories, tower time and have a ball. Let's do ball. Have a ball. Have a ball. All right, the answer to the following will include the word ball. 60 seconds, start the clock. She was the star of I Love Lucy. Lucy O'Ball. Yes, you can take a base after this pitch. Ball four. Yes, you might have played in one of these when you were little. Pass. It is a ball pit. You will find these on a car between a wheel and a fixed axle. Ball bearing? Yes. A psychic might look into this to see the future. Crystal ball. Yes. This is the black ball in pool. Eight ball. Yes. She rules the candy kingdom in the animated series Adventure Time. Princess uh, Gumball. Uh, Princess Gumball. Princess Gumball. Princess Gumball. Yes. Goodness gracious, Jerry Lee is the famous for this song. Yes. Great Balls of Fire. Goku is featured in this Japanese anime right. Dragon Ball. Yes. This game was once played in schools and was also the title of a movie starring Ben Stiller. Yep, time was up. It was Dodgeball. And at the end of your round, 7 out of 10 on your 60-second round. Great job, teams. Alternates, you can go ahead and take your seats as we head into round four. In round four, we'll pick back up with our Toss-up questions only, we will be doubling the point value. So we're now playing for 20-point toss-up questions. And as an added wrinkle, we'll be deducting 20 points for incorrect responses. So it is a tight game right now. It is a tie game right now. So play smart and play strategic, both teams, Oyster River and Winnicunit. Here we go. A 1969 clash at this bar in New York City's Greenwich Village is often credited as a key moment in the fight for LGBTQ rights in the U.S. James, a voice of river. A Stonewall bar. Yes, Stonewall is right. In 1961, this pilot became the first person to travel into space. Emma of Winnicunit. Shoot, um, green? Ah, uh, <laughs> no, sorry. Voice of river. You were close. It's Gagarin, Yuri Gagarin. In 2004, Gene Robinson was invested in Concord, New Hampshire as this church's first openly gay bishop. He's a bishop in the Episcopal Church. All right, teams, we have a math question, so you've got pencil and paper in case you want it. What is four-fifths plus one-half as a mixed number? 
Emma of Winniconnet. 14 fifths. Uh, sorry, no. We need it as a mixed number. Can you give it to me in a mixed number? Oh, yeah. Um, one and a fifth. Sorry, no. Oyster River. James? Two and four fifths. No, it is one and three tenths. <sighs> Fractions are no fun. Animator Walter Lance is famous for creating this sometimes annoying animated bird with a famous laugh with Ben Bugs Hardaway in 1940. The character has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and is the official mascot of Universal Studios. Lincoln of Oyster River. Tweety Bird. Sorry, no. <laughs> Win a cunt it. Uh, Roadrunner. Sorry, I need you to ring in oh. if you want to. Vivian of Winniconnet. Roadrunner. It is Woody Woodpecker. Sorry. The 20th Amendment changed the beginning and ending date of a presidential term from March 4th to January 20th. Who was the first president inaugurated on January 20th? It was FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. In what novella by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry will you find a prince, a fox, a rose, and a baobab trees? James of Oyster River. The Little Prince. The Little Prince is right. Nominated by Donald Trump, this jurist is the fifth woman to serve on the U.S. Supreme Court. Emma of Winniconnet. Uh, Amy Klobuchar. Sorry, no. James of Oyster River. Amy Coney Barrett. Amy Coney Barrett is right. This actor, comedian, and filmmaker who had a sketch comedy series with Keegan-Michael Key on Comedy Central won the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay for the 2017 horror film Get Out. Aaron of Oyster River. Jordan Peele. Correct. All right, team, the next question is a civics question coming to you from New Hampshire's Kid Governor on your monitors. Take a look. Only one person has served as governor of two separate states. Sam Houston was governor of Tennessee from 1827 until 1829. He was also governor of this state from 1859 until 1861, when he was forced out of the office for refusing to swear an oath of loyalty to the Confederacy. Lincoln of Oyster River. Texas. Texas is right. This amendment, ratified in 1967, stated in Section 1 that in case of the removal of the president from office or of his death or resignation, the vice president shall become president. That's the 25th Amendment. In 1801, after a 73 to 73 electoral tie, the House of Representatives chose this politician as President of the United States. Lincoln of Oyster River. Hayes. Sorry, no. Anthony of Winniconnet. Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson's right. In 1919, Woodrow Wilson signed an act of Congress creating the Grand Canyon National Park in this state. Vivienne of Winniconnet. Arizona? Yes. This chess prodigy won the U.S. Chess Championship in 1961 at the age of 14. Lincoln of Oyster River. Bobby Fischer. Correct. This author's first novel, The Martian Chronicles, was originally a collection of short stories that an editor suggested the author connect together to form a novel. Adam of Winniconnet. Ray Bradbury. Yes. In 1912, German geophysicist Alfred Wegener presented this theory, which was inspired by his noticing similarities between fossilized plants found on either side of the Atlantic Ocean. Vivienne of Winniconnet. Pangea? No, sorry. Lincoln of Oyster River. Continental Drift. Continental Drift is the right answer. All right, teams, go ahead and take a look at your monitors for the next question. You are looking at a vase designed by this artist who worked in stained glass pottery, jewelry, and enamels. He was the son of the man who founded a company that operates a store that Holly Golightly enjoys visiting. And that is a Tiffany vase. This song is the result of the combination of the music from the British song to Anacreon in Heaven and the words from the poem Defense of Fort McHenry. Lincoln of Voice to River. Star Spangled Banner. You got it. January is named after this two-faced Roman god of transitions, beginnings, and doorways. Anthony of Winniconnet. Janus. Yes. Jacques Offenbach's comic opera Orpheus in the Underworld features the Gallop Infernal in the final scene. The Moulin Rouge and Folly's Berger 
used. That sound ends the round, and it looks like it's going to be Oyster River with the victory by a score of 350 to 230. Congratulations, o o Oyster River, on a great win against a tough team. We'll see you in a couple weeks in round two, Winnick Hunt it. Tough loss, but a close fought game. I hope you guys had fun. We had fun having you guys here. And we hope you had fun at home as well. We do hope you join us next week with two brand new teams here on Granite State Challenge. But that's going to do it for us this week. And I learned something this week. I hope you did too. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time. Major funding for the production of Granite State Challenge is provided by Unitil. Additional funding provided by NEA New Hampshire, Safety Insurance, the New Hampshire Lottery, DF Richard Energy, Cognia, HRCU, and viewers like you. Thank you.